Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good so, evening, hey there. Good evening. Um, so here we are once again um, on a Thursday, which is great. It's going to be basically the last class of the week. And yeah, after this one uh, or this one, you guys, you know, have the freedom to um, have a restful night tomorrow. Now, the topic of resting and having good a evening, restful night, good evening, good evening, is actually going to be part of the topics for today. As tonight we're going to be discussing or um, talking about some phrases or some expressions we can use related to sleeping. Also, of course, we're going to be, um, you know, developing the topic related to reduced time classes or um, the reduced classes just in general. And um, yeah, those are going to be some of the things we're going to be covering. Um, yes. Uh, physical que le quería informar que yo había querido hacer las, acti las actividades de la plataforma. Ya uh -huh. in estoy intentando, pero no me deja acceder a la página. Ahorita no le está funcionando. No, intenté, intenté más temprano y tampoco me permití acceder. Okay. Porque los... ya estoy, tenía la tarde de libro para hacerlo y no los me deja. últimos días ha estado funcionando extraño. Por ejemplo, ayer eh, al mediodía, lo mismo me pasó a mí. Yo estuve intentando como unos... 20, 30 minutos de ingresar y mm -hmm. nunca me lo permitió. Eh, sí. Luego, ya por la tarde, se supone que, eh, que habían corregido algunos errores y ahí sí ya me funcionaba. Pero mm -hmm. si persiste el problema, eh, más adelante sería así de reportarlo. Porque eh, no está, o sea, como le digo, es algo que está pasando bastante ahorita. No sé si está fallando alguna codificación o qué pero está pasando bastante a menudo que a muchos los deja por largo rato sin acceso. Sí. Um, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Es lo que me, me pasa es que recargo la página. Uh -huh. Ahorita la recargué y se me aparece lo de los cursos, pero ya cuando me meto a uno, me, me sale otra vez el error. El error no y otra vez a, los... a iniciar sesión, me imagino. O a... Ajá, re, recargo, me sale que inicia sesión y otra vez me sale el error, recargo la página y... Y ya la página de los cursos, que ya estoy en mi perfil, me vuelve a salir el error al, al tratar de meterme al, al curso de inglés. Ok. Voy a anotar entonces el nombre para poder eh, más tarde reportarlo eh, cuando termine. Así, si no lo revisan hoy mismo, pues sería para que lo revisen el día de mañana y así no haya afección tampoco en, en cuanto a... A la revisión, o no sé si ya pasó la, la parte de la revisión que sería para esta semana. Es, es que esa parte era la que iba, estaba tratando de hacer, pero me, no he podido por los errores de la página. Ok, uh -huh. muy bien, entonces ya lo tengo, José Luis. Muy bien, eh, ya gracias. luego voy a... No, gracias a usted. Ok, so, uh, hi, welcome, welcome. Um, so here we are, we are going to be talking about sleeping and we can, you know, Probably if we have a chance and, and if we can, we might just drift off for a little bit. Why not? You know, or maybe just not off. Do you guys know what that means? Drift off, not off? No, teacher. Seems like no, right? Okay. So last night, actually, I saw someone who was nodding off by uh, at some point during the class. Uh, Walter, I think it was around 8.20 when he was, como decimos en buen salvadoreño, cabeceando, pero no vamos a decir en inglés heading, ¿verdad? It's nodding mm -hmm. off, ¿sí? So nodding, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know, know that, but for example, we say that cabeceando when we, for example, go on the street and someone is like, hey there, hey there. We, I mean, it's, it's a common practice, you know. It's, I think it's in, in Latin America in general that we normally just do this. And that means like, how are you or something like that? We understand that we are saying hi to the other person just by nodding. Um, so this this movement here of, uh, you know, the head is known as nodding. Also, when you um, do the thing that we call in Spanish asentir, ¿sí? o sea, como que aceptamos verdad algo, asentir, that is also nodding. Okay, so basically all, all movements that you do with your head are going to be recognized as nodding. Now, nodding off is what happens when you're cabeceando, like falling asleep. So that's nodding off. Yeah, nodding off. 
So nodding of like saying hi, nodding of saying yes, those are going to stay as nodding, but the one that is going to be special is the one nodding for falling asleep. And that one is going to be node off. So yeah, nodding off, also drifting off. When you drift, drift off, you know what? We're going to talk about that when we get to that topic. Okay. Ya se los explico todo ahorita. Mejor cuando lleguemos al tema, vamos a aclarar bien a, a qué se refiere. Pero todas esas son frases muy comunes, son frases eh, muy útiles también. Um, so yeah, but this one is actually going to be the last chance I'm going to have to ask this question, the question that I love to ask every Thursday or every last day of the week. Um, because yeah, last next week we're not going to be having um, you know classes until late in the week, or at least it's not the plan. But tonight I will be asking you guys, what's up for the weekend? Okay. Now it's not what plans do you have. It's what's up for the weekend. It sounds informal, but it's not necessarily that informal. Okay. So what is up for the weekend? We are talking about what are basically the plans, but just changing a little bit of the question, not only um, by asking all the time, uh, what plans do you have? In this case is, what's up for the weekend? So we're going to start this time with uh, Lourdes. Tell me, Lourdes, what's up for the weekend in your life, for next weekend? Oh, hi, hi. hi. Uh, well, on Saturday, I only plan to rest. Uh, usually that is the day I, that I used to um, recover to yes <laughs> and also to pray read the bible and be with God like uh, for the day and on Sunday actually I I had a plan cancelled <laughs> I was going to visit the Pital with my sister mm -hmm. but today she told me that it, it will not be possible Oh, so sad. I have to figure out what, what I will do on Sunday. Was it the first time that you were going to go to Alpital? Uh, no, it, it was going to be the second time. I went like in 2017, mm -hmm. but I couldn't see anything because it was too foggy. foggy? <laughs> so I just remember the like the hill, the green hill uh -huh. and the cold that was like six grades. Degrees. Degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> six degrees. Yeah, that's that's very low. That's yes. very low. Yeah, it's very low. Were you wearing like a coat and, and, and a winter hat back then? Yes, I was wearing a, yes, a beanie, um, mm -hmm. a lot of sweaters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it, I still remember that I had a, a cup of coffee and I wanted to put my fingers inside because it was really, really cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow so i think that it is with this group that i have shared my experience with el pital i remember that it is a dream that i had since i was younger I, I think i was like 12 when i found out about el pital i have always been one person who loves being in cold weather or in cold situations um and uh, i dreamt of going there my family planned to go like five times and all those plans got canceled However, there is something that I have always said, and I, I continue doing it even to this day, that if a plan gets canceled, it's probably because God has a different plan for you. So it's not because it's because probably something was going to happen, you know, on that trip. So I almost never um, complain whenever a trip or, or uh, something, a journey gets canceled. However, I remember that. I remember that my family will plan to go there and we never did. We actually, I haven't really been to El Pital with my family. I went with some friends. But the thing is that when I saw the news, I remember that I saw that they had some strawberry plants and there were even some strawberries who had um, ice, you know, on, on top of them. So they were completely frozen. And I was like, I wish I could see that. Like, I wish I could be there. Um, but then as I had to move to the States, I had to live through the winter in one of the coldest winters in, in, in the U.S. or one of the coldest places in the U.S. When I went to El Pital, I didn't feel cold. I was feeling just normal. I was wearing shorts. I was just wearing one sweater 
And actually, I remember that I took it off because I felt it was a little bit too much, you know, of like um, heat and I wanted to enjoy the cold weather. It was like uh, basically the same. It was like six degrees. It was also very foggy. The day was both foggy and cloudy. Um, it rained even at night and uh, some actually, no, it rained during our stay. And yeah, I also remember that I felt the drain falling the rain falling and it wasn't that cold at least not anymore um so yeah experience ruined thanks to the united states yes but it's amazing i mean it's a place that i would love to see again and uh definitely a, a must you know for a salvadorian if you ever have a chance to go to el pital even if you are one of those people who struggle against the cold the cold try to do it try and 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 you'll see that you'll find something that you will like okay but then uh next one let's hear now from uh from who from amilcar tell me amilcar what is up for this weekend oh, you're still on mute it was a uh, sandwich you're still on mute. I mean, okay. there we go. Okay. okay. There we go. Uh, what happened with the with the weekend? <laughs> yeah. What is up for the for next weekend? Uh, what plans next weekend? are ah, we having? Okay. Uh, uh, we are planning with my wife's a go to El Congo. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. So, anything uh, anything apart from going to El Congo? Any special plans in El Congo? Mm. Um, we have a, uh, uh, I don't know what you can say, uh, uh, a piece of land, mm -hmm. uh, terrain. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So you're planning to go visit that place? Oh, okay, okay, that place. We have to visit that place only in the evening and in the in in. In the morning, mm -hmm. uh, in the evening, we come back to home. Okay, cool. Okay. So yeah, you're planning to go, you know, check out on your, on your piece of land. That sounds okay, great. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a nice plan. Very good. Good, good, good. Uh, all right, moving on. How about if we hear from Julia? What's up for this weekend, Julia? <clears throat> Hi, uh, well... Hello, in my case, uh, I really need to rest, so I will try to rest on Saturday, but it's kind of difficult because I have a daughter and mm -hmm. she's only one year, so she's very active. Mm -hmm. So, but I will try to rest a little bit uh, because I was in the, in the middle of the week, I was kind of sick, so... <laughs> I, I I will try to rest. So in that case, in that case, I won't be sick more. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, but on Sunday, I need to go to Chalatenango so to buy the things that like the to the supermarket mm -hmm. because in there the things are are uh, pressure. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, and they are a uh, less expensive. Cheaper. <laughs> yeah, cheaper. <laughs> Don't ruin it. I was. I dije, dije que pressure porque no quería que lo dijera porque si no ahora todos vamos a querer a chalate a comprar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should go actually because it's better. Oh, it's okay. better, I, so. I'm waiting for all. Oh, you're waiting for all of us. Yeah, that's yes, great. Uh, Yes. Yeah, that's true. Luis okay. has has his. Uh, do you guys have like a um? Uy, well, se me fue. Well, well uh, uh, let me tell you. Uh, this day was very hard because the the cow have had a call, oh, really? and we will call him Fer because Fer in February and the name is Fer. Okay, so I like, have... I like it because uh, it's increased the milk production. Mm -hmm. and, and you have two newborns, good. right? Yes, yes, two. Uh, and 
varón. Ajá, uh, a male uh, and a female. And, and yes, and female. Oh, okay. Yes. And we also celebrating the party in town. Oh, and really? Today, yes, there was a horse parade. Uh -huh. It was um, the field of the, the caballos today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The, uh, today. Okay, so this yes. weekend might be a nice weekend to go to Chalate. Yes. So if you live anywhere nearby, try to go. You see, it's yes. a nice opportunity to go. And also you can go visit Luis. You can contact him and then, you know, you can uh, get some milk, some cheese, something from mm -hmm. him. Okay. <laughs> Do you mm -hmm. make cheese, uh, Luis? Uh, no, because we um, you sell the milk. The, say the milk. Oh, yes. okay, yes. okay, nice. Yeah, and the that's other good. person. Yeah, that's but between... when 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 we when we need a uh, a cheese, uh -huh. uh, my my daughter uh -huh. uh, made the cuajada and. And cream and cheese. Yes. Oh, okay. So she's ready, you know, whenever you need her to make some cheese or some cojada, there yes. she's going to be. All yes. right. Cool. Very good. All right. Okay. Um, so I will assume that for this weekend, you might go to the festivals in your town. Luis? Oh, yes. I will. I, yeah. You're going to the festivals on the weekend? Um, maybe because um, the, this tomorrow on um, Saturday on Sunday uh, we will be uh, this today cutting grass for mm -hmm. the cow. Oh, after that will be um, eat the the cow need to eat more and more and more because. It's the, the, the only way because produce um, yeah. some some bottle of milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And also I remember that this month, well, actually from here to April are basically the hardest months, right? To have cattle because it's really hard to get um like grass or or anything for them to eat. Okay. So so yeah, well, um, Good luck with that. Good luck with the activities at the farm. Uh, now, how about the case of uh, someone like um, Jacqueline? What's up for this weekend, Jacqueline? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello there. Uh, actually, teacher, I don't have any plans for this weekend. Oh, yes, yes, I have one plan. Wash mm -hmm. my clothes. Oh, come to the volcano. <laughs> yes, teacher. Ay, a Kelly, como que le gustan las cosas así extremas, va casi todos los fines de semana al volcán. Ay, sí. <laughs> yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, so. it's my my unique plan. Okay, so climb, climb the volcano. On, oh. on Monday, I, I, I will to. Te voy a contar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay, great. Hopefully you can make it. Hopefully you can, you know, clean a lot of your of your clothes. All right. Um, how about the case of um let's see Sandra? How about you, Sandra? What's up for this weekend? Ooh, for this weekend. Um we we were planning to go to La Ruta de las Flores, but um, it was awarded the plan because uh, my husband has to work all day long on Saturday and, and Sunday we have to go to church and I have to teach my children over there and maybe after church we have a, a, a little space for us you know mm -hmm. okay <laughs> Yeah, it will be great. It will be great. So we see, I, I see that there are some canceled plans for this weekend, huh? Yeah. So it's, it's like a, it's like a, like a trending topic right now. Some canceled plans for the weekend. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? It's, it's a TT. Hopefully yeah. I don't get to cancel my plans because yeah, in my case, the, the things that I'm planning to do is that I want to go to San Miguel. I mean, for us going to San Miguel is something that we have to plan because I live like 40 minutes away. 
So yeah, I want to go to San Miguel. I want to go watch a movie. I want to go get some some things from uh, from Vidri. And uh, well, I think that's it. Spend the afternoon with my sister, some friends, and my girlfriend. And uh, on Sunday, well, actually on Sunday I have to go to um what you might call it to my classes, to my air conditioning classes. So it takes a lot of my day going going to those classes. Um, tomorrow, however, I don't know if you guys know about that, but um, tomorrow, I one of my cousins, actually, he's basically like my brother, like my older brother. He's coming from the U.S. I think he's about to get on, 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 on his plane. But yeah, he's coming from the U.S. and he wants us to go to Puerto El Triunfo. So uh, we might do that, you know, tomorrow. So it's great that I don't have, uh, that um, you know, that we're going to have a Friday off. So that uh, yeah, yeah. So that I can I can stay up late with him um, talking because yeah, it has been like almost a year, a year and a half since I last saw him. We speak on the phone a lot, but um, yeah, it's not that we see one another very often. Um, but yeah, okay. So the last person that I will ask for tonight is actually going to be um. Let's see, if we can hear from Daniel. How about you, Daniel? What What's up for this coming weekend? Hi, good evening. Hey there, good evening. Well, I think that this weekend, mm -hmm. um, I will stay at home. Um, my family will go out on a trip. And I prefer to stay uh, to rest in catch up um, on a series or, or movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, sometimes it's it's okay, you know, it's fresh to just to stay home. Uh, sometimes, in my case at least, I enjoy being home alone. Um, there yeah. are some some days that, I mean, living with the family like oh, every single day and then going on a trip mostly when there are like uh, complications, let's say, because families are tricky sometimes. It's better to stay back and to just uh, be you, you know. I something that I, I normally do when I stay home alone is that I like to buy anything that I want to eat. Like I buy a lot of things. And uh, as I consider myself a good cook, I just make whatever it is that I want. And when my food is ready, I just turn on the TV or maybe my PlayStation and I start doing me things, you know, uh, and enjoy myself. So, yeah, I, I will. I completely see where you're coming from with that. Because it's it's sometimes a good idea to just um, doze off on on your own. But okay, so now we are here. We are on uh, the topics, and tonight, as I said, we're going to be working on some expressions related to sleep or sleeping, depending on how you want to refer to them. But before, we are going to be looking at this: reduce time classes. Now. Why do we use reduced time classes? And it is also something very weird because it is very weird that we refer to them as reduced time classes when what is actually reduced is the noun. So it should be reduced noun classes. The reason why they are called reduced time classes is because we are referring to a period of time because we're talking about a set time. Uh, therefore, we don't have to say reduced uh, noun classes. If we were talking about an, a noun specifically, then we will refer to them as reduced noun classes. But in this case, as we are using these words right here, that is why we refer to them as reduced time classes. Now, first, I just want you guys to take a look at them because right after you might have to come back or we are going to come back um, to build up some sentences around, well, these phrases over here. So we have right after, right before, while, before, and after. Those are the five ones we're going to be working on tonight. There are more, but those are the five basics that we're going to be covering um, tonight. But how do we use them? When do we use them? Why do we use them? Well, the, the, uh, the way in which we're going to be using them is basically by subtracting one noun whenever we're using a time class. Time classes, of course, are going to be those that start 
with a uh, with a time uh, reference or a adverb of time. Okay, in this case, we're going to refer to this one specifically as an adverb of time. But as we have this adverb to start the sentence, this becomes a time clause because the whole section close to it is going to be related to or uh, related to it and influenced by it. Therefore, it's a time clause. Now, sure. if you read it right as it is, you know, as, as the basic way it is written, you see that it, it reads as, after I finish my work, I head to the office. Okay, so only taking that into consideration, I'm going to take it away. Only taking that into consideration, only taking the fact that you say, after I finish my work, I head to the office. Do you feel like the sentence is okay like that? Like, do you like a sentence structured that way? ¿Les parece que esa oración esté bien estructurada? ¿Creen que sea correcto? ¿O esté bien cómo se dice esa oración? ¿O cómo se lee esa oración? After I finish my work, I head, I head to the office. I head, I head is, for me, it's in, with, without sense. O sea, no tiene sentido. I don't know. Okay, so for you, the fact that it says I had, it's basically the thing that uh, it's kind of, kind of, um, whatchamacallit, it's uh, unmeaningful in the sentence. Well, anyone else, anyone who feels like there might be something missing, some detail to highlight in this sentence, after I finish my work, I head to the office. What do you think about this phrase? Let's see. Uh, I, be I believe that is um, after I finish my work, después de terminar mi trabajo, me dirijo a la, a la oficina. That's mm -hmm. what I, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, that's that's actually like the 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 the, the meaning behind it in Spanish. Uh huh. Uh huh. Solamente eso sería lo que entendemos o identificamos. He yeah. work outside. Okay. In the office is the report. He reported that well, he fixed. Uh, I don't know. Okay. No. So that is actually a good point. That is a very, very good point. When you have here uh, the, the noun, because that's what we're going to refer to it as, the noun, even though it's a pronoun, but we're going to understand it as a noun, uh, it is a little bit too participating of that sentence. Okay. It is taking part of it. And the sentence has a different meaning. When you say, after I finish my work, I head to the office, it means that you work outside of an office, outside of the office. Now, this, for example, after finishing my work, I head to the office, it's a different way. It's a different structure. When you say, after finishing my work, I head to the office, it basically means that you're not too far away you know, from the office. It might mean that you were in a conference room. So it's not that you are away from the office. The reason why, or what is going to make you understand it that way is the fact that you mentioned the, um, the noun or the, es que, ah, es que no, el problema es que no se puede decir así, o sea, se dice noun, y por eso, o sea, estoy luchando con eso porque en español es sujeto, sí, pero es que en inglés, si les digo el subject, no es eso, el subject en inglés se refiere, verdad, a el tema general, pero, o sea, por eso no se, no se puede decir subject, es el noun, pero se lo voy a decir así en español mejor para que quede más claro. Cuando utilizamos doble sujeto en una oración como esta, que dice, después que termino el trabajo, me voy a la oficina en español, eso es muy común. En español, ambas serían traducidas de la misma forma. O sea, ambas van a entenderse de la misma manera, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés, el tener este I ahí, hace que yo participe de forma directa en la acción. Lo que significa que cuando yo termino el trabajo, me voy a la oficina, hace entender que es que yo no estaba en la oficina, que yo estaba trabajando en un lugar externo. Lo mismo con, eh, o oh, perdón, diferente el caso con esta otra. Pero como les digo, en español, el problema es que ambas se van a entender de la misma forma. Sí, porque after finishing my work, el hecho de que tiene este posesivo aquí, my, hace que en el español, la gramática del español, nos obligue a colocar el, um, después de terminar con mi trabajo. 
¿sí? O al terminar con mi trabajo. Entonces, ese, ese es el único detalle que en el español no se genera esa diferencia. Y por eso es que por, probablemente esta estructura no tenga sentido para nosotros. Para nosotros sea quizás como algo extra, porque pues en español no tenemos nada similar. En ningún momento eh, llegamos a tener, digamos, esa, esa necesidad de expresar, ¿verdad? El hecho de que yo participo de forma directa en una acción, pero hay cosas en las que a pesar que sí las explico, las menciono, tal vez yo no tengo una participación directa. Y por eso es que aquí no está, ustedes ven que no está el, el sujeto, ¿sí? O sea, el, el que sería conocido en inglés como el noun. Entonces aquí no está el sujeto, porque el sujeto tal vez no necesariamente tuvo que movilizarse, no tuvo que hacer mucho más, sino que terminó con esto y ya, ¿sí? Es como si yo dijese, after finishing classes, I go to bed. Ok, porque yo estoy cerca de mi, de mi, de mi cuarto, ¿sí? estoy, estoy acá en mi casa. Diferente, por ejemplo, si yo estuviese en este momento en una oficina, yo dijera, after I finish the class, I go to bed. ¿sí? O sea, es como si después de terminar la clase yo me voy a la cama, pero es como que tengo que viajar, tengo que desplazarme, tengo que moverme, hacer algo yo, ¿sí? para poder realizar esa otra acción. Es en cierto modo contrastable este tema con los conditionals, aunque los conditionals sí tienen una función también en español, pero esto en español no existe. Sí, es una de esas cositas, esos detalles de, del idioma que en español no existen. Y esto tampoco es algo que uno se fija tan a menudo, o sea, que se van a encontrar ustedes todo el tiempo con, con, ah, me voy a fijar si dice el ay, porque si dice el ay significa que entonces él hizo algo para que lo otro también funcione. O sea, no es algo así de común, es una de esas estructuras que es cierto que es importante que conozcamos porque en algún momento nos vamos a encontrar más que todo con esta de aquí, ¿verdad? Esta es la que, la que más a menudo nos puede llegar a quedar como, ¿qué quiere decir? Pues se refiere a que su participación, si bien es cierto, es personal, es directa con la acción, o el sujeto que sea que se mencione tiene participación con la acción, no tiene una participación tan directa como en el caso en el cual se menciona también el sujeto en el time class, ¿sí? So when we reduce the time class, what we're doing is that we're taking importance away from the subject, from the noun. Yeah, from the noun. So yeah. Okay, vamos a ver otro, otro ejemplo aquí. Sí. While I take lunch or my lunch uh, break at work, I often sneak off five minute, uh, often sneak a five minute nap. Sí. While I take my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap. Entonces, significa que cuando estoy tomando mi descanso de una hora en el trabajo, usualmente eh, me robo, digamos, o me aparto, ¿sí? Para tomarme una siesta de cinco minutos. Diferente a esta. While taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak off, uh, sneak a five minute time. No sé dónde se acaba ese off. Pero bueno, en este caso, cuando decimos while taking my lunch break at work, Sí. Um, a ver, en este, sí, este de cuando yo tomo mi descanso en el trabajo, es como, o sea, el, 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 el peso no se va a, ten, a tener en la primera parte, sino que más que todo el peso de lo que yo hago va a sentirse en la segunda parte de la oración. Ok. Um, por ejemplo, esta que dice, while taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak off a five minute nap se puede entender como que aquí, en mi silla, yo me recuesto y me duermo, ¿sí? La, del, la que no tiene el sujeto, el, el que está en con gerundio. While taking my lunch break at work, ¿sí? Esa. Se entiende como que, o sea, yo simplemente aquí, en mi silla, en la misma silla donde yo estoy trabajando, me recuesto y me duermo. O sea, cinco minutos. That's it. Pero, when we say, while I take my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap, en esta sí es un poco distinto. En esta vamos a entender como que la persona no se puede dormir allí donde está, sino que tiene que hacer algo, se tiene que acomodar, moverse, que no lo vea el jefe. Y en esta sí se puede entender como que me, me escondo, ¿verdad? Para poder tener esa siesta. Entonces, es la diferencia. Como les digo, en español esto no, no lo utilizamos, no tiene cabida necesariamente en nuestro idioma el decir o hacer una diferencia con una estructura así sencilla como esta, pero en inglés sí. En inglés cuando ustedes dicen, well, I take this, well, I do that, eh, significa que ustedes hacen algo, o sea, que ustedes participan de forma directa con lo que sea que van a mencionar después. En cambio, cuando decimos, while well, taking my lunch break, eso es simplemente como que estemos explicando lo que hacemos. 
O sea, simplemente lo, lo decimos, pero eh, no con mayor esfuerzo, no con mayor recelo, nuestra participación en la acción, si bien es cierto, es tal vez importante, no es directa, no es como que nosotros tenemos, como diríamos a buen salvadoreño, que rebuscarnos por lo que sea que vamos a mencionar. Sí, entonces por eso les ponía el ejemplo anteriormente, cuando me voy a dormir, o sea, si yo estuviese en una oficina, o sea, yo tendría que manejar quizás hasta mi casa para poderme dormir. En cambio, si yo digo, after finishing my class, I go to bed, it's like very simple. Yeah, the teacher is just close. They're like, what, 15 steps away from his room, so he can go to bed as, as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, that is the difference. That is the thing that we have, you know, to understand when we're going to be using these reduced time classes. Also, uh, it, it will have a lot to do with time. O sea, porque de, de la misma forma, ahí es donde viene también el nombre de que sean reduced time classes. Porque cuando ustedes utilizan el noun, cuando ustedes ponen el I, ponen el you, el however, or whichever noun you're going to use, uh, that noun also has to perform an activity that is going to take some time. Therefore, when you reduce that, it's basically that you're taking away that action. ¿Sí? O sea, cuando hablamos del reduce time, time classes, es como si esa acción, ese momento, ese, ese par de pasos que la persona tiene que dar, esa manejadita que la persona tiene que dar, se evita. Entonces, de ahí donde viene el nombre también, ¿verdad? Del reduce time classes. Es como que ya eso no tenés que moverte, no tenés que hacer mucho más. Casi como que de inmediato podés realizar la actividad. Sí, o sea, la actividad no va a requerir, ¿verdad? Una, una participación tan directa de tu parte. Now, there are some um, time, time expressions or some adverbs of time that are not going to be reducible. For example, if we talk about ever since, ever since is one of them. Anything that you say with ever since? <laughs> Sorry. Everything that we say with this, uh, it's going to come with, um, with the two proper um, subjects or pr two proper nouns. So ever since I was a kid, I have had trouble getting up early because here what you're explaining is something that was very common on you. The same as as soon as, it's going to have two different nouns. You see here, I, and then, then also I right after the comma until the same, it repeats uh, the, the noun. Whenever, in this case, it doesn't repeat the noun, but Whenever is something that you cannot adjust and place right next to a gerund. So that also has a lot to do with it because you cannot place a gerund right next to it. And for reduced time classes to work, you need to use the gerund form of the verb. So uh, if we go back to the, to the first words that we have here, right after, these ones are completely ready, or we can say in English, completely gerund ready. Okay, so you can place any gerund right next to them. For example, if I say right after, right after eating that fish, I started, sorry, we need the comma here. I started, it started to feel sick. So right after eating that fish, I started feeling, I starting to feel sick. So here you see the, the gerund is easily placeable right after, right after. And uh, there is no need to, to make any more changes. But with whenever, it is kind of weird, okay? So whenever normally includes a um, subject right after it. So when you use whenever, the subject is what comes next, not the verb. And it's very, very weird when you see um, these phrases that have an ever at the end right next to gerunds. It's not something that common. It's not something you're going to see every day. Therefore, here, the gerund will not work. Even, the, even though we don't have the, the noun repetition or the subject repetition, we cannot use it with uh, the, the reduced time classes. Here, we come back to the same old story. We have two different um, nouns referring to the same Jesus, that never happened to me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, we have here the same the same old story with repetitive uh, nouns. And the examples, how are we going to read them? Well, basically, it's just to tell some something, you know, about you, about uh, an activity. And uh, 
all of them are basically about that, but this one's are some of the ones that we cannot reduce. So anytime you come across ever since, as soon as, until, whenever, or from the moment, um, you have to remember that these ones cannot be reduced, that any activity that you mentioned with them has to include you in both sides of the story as an, an important aspect of the story. Therefore, if we say ever since I was a kid, I've had trouble getting up early, you know that you are important, that that person that is um, saying this example is important in the whole thing, in the whole story. Um, same when we get to as soon as I get up early in the morning, I race off to the gym. Same thing, you know, you have, uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure thing. No, I it, honestly, it hasn't happened to me. I think it's because of the topic that we're going to be discussing next that I'm um, I'm yawning so much, but here, as soon as I get up uh, in the morning, I race off to the gym. It has me as an important point. It has me as a participant in both points. And that is why, uh, you know, it's important to mention me or the person performing the actions in both sections of the sentence. Um, same as when we have until, until I've had my coffee, I'm such a grunge. Um, so it's basically the same thing. You know, I'm important in both sections. I'm important in the part that I'm a grunge, and I'm also important in the section that uh, it's something that ends until I have my coffee. Now, here, when we use whenever, I told you before, it's the fact that uh, right after we use whenever, we have to include a subject or a noun, and that is the reason why we cannot um, use the gerund form right here. But uh, yeah, we can read this example as whenever you go, you have to work with numbers, um, plan to do it around noon. Okay. I don't know why. This example is kind of weird. I remember the first time I read it, I was like, why? Do you guys have any idea of why? Oh, yes, because I, I suppose it's uh, it's the same thing. You have to, to watch night working. Uh-huh. And, and at night, it, Ah, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. I, I I suppose it was the morning. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. To do it around noon. Around noon. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> maybe it's a solar calculator so you have to charge it and, and you charge it better at noon maybe no it's it's something that got me thinking you know whenever you have to work with numbers plan to do it around noon why why around noon no clue in my case i don't know i don't even like numbers so i don't know maybe don't like because number may you feel asleep maybe that might be another reason. However, though, uh, right after you eat your lunch, or at least in my case, uh, as soon as I eat lunch, I feel sleepy. So, I don't know. Uh, That's normally in every person, every I think, people. Yeah, I think everyone is basically like that. You know, after <laughs> you have lunch, you feel sleepy. Um, the only thing is that we don't take advantage of that and we almost never nap. If we were to nap, I think our country will be even better, you know, if we got used to napping. But yeah, we, we never nap. Anyway, next example, it's I've been a night person from the moment I started college. Um, in this case, you guys, who considers to be a night person here? Who likes night better than day? Let's see, I'm going to ask you uh, one by one. Let's see, in your case, Yancy, do you think you are a night person or a day person? A uh, no. uh, day person. A yes. day person? Okay. Yes. Um, how about um, how about you, Sandra? Night or day person? Oops, I'm, I'm day and night person. <laughs> day and night person? <laughs> You're like an owl then. <laughs> well, because uh, 
I have to work very much with my husband, um, so especially when uh, it is time to present taxes at the Ministerio de Hacienda, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I have to help him to, to make the IVA and the Pagua Cuenta, and, and it, is, it is very uh, hard. Um, uh, it's un, it's un, uh, process, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a long process and, and, and hard process. Okay. And I have and the time it is not enough in the in the in the day because I have we have to go to banks or or, or another things to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um mm -hmm. how about you, Azrual? What do you think? Are you a night person or a day person? I just gonna say that my passion is sleeping. You what? My passion is sleeping. Oh, really you're passionate. Yeah. Oh, okay. So <laughs> you you're not not either a night or day person. I get that. All right. How about you, Jose Luis? Are you a night or a day person? Mm, it's a difficult question. <laughs> uh, maybe a night person. Okay. Because at, at night I feel more motivated to do. Uh, more things. Usually, I just uh, lay lay down on my bed during the afternoon, mm -hmm. and, and at night, night I, I feel I feel more motivated to to do my assignments or or doing another things. Okay, nice. How about you, Luis Alonso? Do you think you're a night or a day person? Excuse me. In my case, uh, a day and a night person because when the cow need help at 11 p.m., I get up and and I have I I have I can have a ready mm -hmm. at the moment okay. because. Uh, the cow don't wait for nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. about right. Yeah, well, about, uh -huh. on the day it was is normal. It's regular. Yeah, it's a normal regular, thing. Regular, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. How about you, Amilcar? What do you think? Are you a day or a night person? Wait, I think you're still on mute. If you're speaking, yeah, I see your mouth moving. You're still on mute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, uh, both, uh, both things, or sometimes uh, like person, uh, like person. Okay, so both at the same time, like Hannah Montana. Um, how about Jenny? What do you think, Jenny? Are you a day or a night person? I am. Uh... Uh, day person because oh. I am more productive in, in the day than at night. Okay. How about Jacqueline? Do you think you are a day or a night person? Jacqueline. Jacqueline, yeah. Maybe she's a, a day person and she's already sleeping, probably. Um, let's hear from Julia then. How about you, Julia? Do you think you are a night person or a day person? Um, well, lately, I am not. You're not? Yes, because I I can sleep at night and I am sleepy uh, during the day. The day. Yes. Yeah. I remember I remember you telling us about that the other day, that you were having problems or issues with the sleeping lately. So yeah, understood, understandable. Sorry, understandable. Um, how about Teacher, yes, Jacqueline? Can you repeat me the question, please? Are you a day or a night person? I a day person, teacher. I I am busy all day, and then I think uh, I am a day person. <laughs> okay, so you the have... night uh, uh -huh. I use I use the night only rest, teacher. Okay, so you yes. basically have to be a day person. Yes, I, I must have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, how about Ailey? What do you think? Are you a day or a night person? Uh, 
There Hello. we go. Hello hey. there. Hello. Mm -hmm. Tell us, are you a day or a night person? I think night person. Uh, because I feel more energy and motivation or concentration. <laughs> okay. Okay, nice. Understood and understandable. Um, how about Helen? What do you think, Helen? Are you a day or a night person? Totally a day person. Okay. Okay, great. Um, how about uh, Lourdes? What do you think? Are you a day or a night person? I'm a really night person. Uh, I'm a very different person in the morning. <laughs> I am more quiet and I'm not enough okay. until like 10 a.m. <laughs> I feel awake. All right. So more like a night person. Good. Um, how about Catherine? What do you think? Are you a day or a night person? Hello. Hello there. Um, I am night person. I usually do everything at night. Chores, homework, walking, taking care of my pets, everything at night. Okay, good. Good to know. Um, how about Daniel? What do you think about yourself? Are you a day or a night person? Well, um, I have always considered myself a night person. Uh, from the moment of my job, I did have been at night. Mm -hmm. uh, my activities, trips, studies, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, 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 good. How about Roberto? What do you think, Roberto? Do you think you are a day or a night person? A uh, day person. Okay, so Roberto says he considers himself a day person. Well, in my case, um, I feel like I am both, you know, because I can uh, be, but depends on my job. Okay, good. In my case, I feel like I can be pretty active during the day, but I honestly love the night. Like, all the activities that can be done at night, um, I love to do them. For example, in uh, in the last few days, my sister and I we have been practicing to um, to do chores at night. You know, we do the dishes, we do the 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 the, um, the floor cleaning at night, and I just feel so fresh when I go to bed. Because, for example, also that's something that has been happening in the last few <clears throat> weeks. Um, that I after I finish my classes, I have to upload the videos, and um, yeah, I just. I don't know. I cannot find enough tiredness in me. Even sometimes I spend the whole day working. And sometimes I work as, as I mean, as I, I have shared with you guys, I work as an electrician. So I, I spend the day going up and down the ladder. Um, but even though I do that, I don't feel like getting tired. I feel like I have a lot of energy still. Um, so I still will play uh, on my, well, on my PlayStation for an hour, an hour and a half before going to bed. Because sometimes I just feel like I don't have enough, you know, like tiredness in me. However, sometimes also in the morning when I wake up, I just feel like sleeping more. But the next day or after I finish the day, I'm just the same. I, I just go back to feeling like I'm not tired enough. And it's just like a, like a vicious process. However, when I get to Fridays, and it's normally something that happens to me on Fridays, I go to bed so quickly. Like, for example, now that we are not going to have a class, it's going to be great because as soon as I want to, I'll go to bed. My family, sometimes they think that um, I stay at my girlfriend's house. I almost never do. I I think I've only done it twice. Uh, but sometimes they think I stayed there because um, it's very common of me to go visit her on Friday. I come back home. I go to bed right away. And they don't see me. So sometimes they even think that I'm there, you know, on Saturdays. But no, it's just like Fridays. I just enjoy going to bed. I enjoy um, sleeping as much as I can. And that makes me feel better, you know, for the rest of the days. So, yeah, that's something very common of me. 
And uh, however, I think humans, we have get, got so used to um, being day persons that we complete most of our activities, most of the offices, most of the things that we have to do as humans are performed during the day. So that basically has made us, you know, forced us into being day persons because there are so little, um, what, businesses open at night. And probably because of the darkness, because we are scared of darkness or the human in general is scared of that darkness. So probably that's the reason why, you know, we decided that the day was the one we were to use um, to do the things. But yeah, the way you like it, it's great. You know, anything you do, I think it's going to be okay as far as you enjoy it. So expressions related to sleep. Deje esto para el final porque así ya de una, ¿verdad? Nos vamos... Y, y ya se van a dormir. So, we have some phrases that are um, commonly used when we're talking about sleeping. We have, for example, be fast asleep. So, be fast asleep is not what you imagine, okay? Because when you hear this, the, 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 the phrase, be fast asleep, you may imagine that it means that you go to sleep like this. But it's not necessarily that. Okay, be fast asleep is very, very similar to saying be sound asleep. Even if you Google it, you're going to see that they are synonyms. Saying be fast asleep and saying be sound asleep, they're both are synonyms. They seem uh, or they mean uh, very similar things. Because being fast asleep and being sound asleep basically means that you are deeply asleep, that you are completely falling asleep. Okay, so uh, if you hear that someone is fast asleep, don't think that that person is the kind of person who only lays down their um, their head on, on, a, on a pillow and they're done. It's not like that, okay? Being fast asleep is the fact that you are deeply asleep. Um, being wide awake. Be wide awake is what you do around, what, 10 a.m., I will say? Or is how... Um, I don't remember if it was Jenny or Julia, but one of them, I think it was Jenny or Lourdes. No, it was Lourdes, actually. Um, so, yeah, it's basically what Lourdes is, you know, around 10 a.m. The tea is wide awake, being completely awake, being completely aware of what's happening, that your nerves are working properly. Um, so, yeah, that is when you are wide awake. Um, however, this phrase is basically a common use whenever you are, for example, in a meeting, and uh, let's say that the, the speaker um, maybe wants to call your attention and he's like, are you falling asleep? You can say, no, I'm wide awake. So that is common, you know, when someone is probably trying to joke with you on um, saying that you might be falling asleep and you can reply that you are wide awake. So that's when you can use it. Um, then we have drift off. I was mentioning it before. Being or drifting off is that you are starting to fall asleep. It's like when you're nodding off, similar, very similar. You are falling asleep, but still you make an effort to not fall asleep because it's probably not a proper time. Okay, so it's what happens to people that take classes from 9 to 10. Eso le pasa bastante a la gente que toma clases de 9 10 aquí. They are drifting off very often. Uh, now, feel drowsy. When you feel drowsy is that you feel very 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 tired it's not even like feeling um um exhausted it's very similar but it's not the same feeling drowsy is even worse than uh than feeling um uh, exhausted okay have a sleepless night when you have a sleepless night is when you spend the night and are not able um to go to sleep is Similar to what Julia has told us that she has been going through the last few weeks. So having a sleepless night is one of those nights when you go to bed, you do your best to fall asleep, but you cannot. So that is when you have a sleepless night. Uh, not off, as I mentioned with drip off, it's very similar. You, are, you might be at a meeting, you might be, uh, you know, being part of a class or something, or maybe at a party. And you, you're just so tired that you stall, start falling asleep, but don't fall asleep completely because it might not be the proper time or location. Then sleep like a log. When you sleep like a log, it happens um, when you just fall into bed and 
you don't know anything, okay? It might be earthquakes, there might be earthquakes, there might be hurricanes, there might be anything. The, wor the whole world can go crazy, but you're sleeping like a log. So like it means... Dormir como troncos. Sí, yes. como troncos, exactamente. Sleep like a log, sí, dormir como tronco. O sea, uh, así como en español existe, también existe en inglés esa, esa frase. Yeah. We are not pro without that. Yeah, <laughs> that's me on the road. Okay, so yeah, that's sleep like a log. That's me on Fridays. <laughs> that's me on Fridays. I oh sleep like God. a log. Uh, oh, then... it's 9-1, teacher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm about to, about to be done. Uh, okay. take, a, take a power nap. Uh, when you take a power nap is, I don't know if you guys have heard that phrase before or, or that na name before. But power naps are what the naps you take that last around 15 minutes. And those are the naps that you take around 1, 1 or 2 p.m. Okay, so taking a power nap normally happens at the middle of the day. And uh, what it does is that it basically gives you energy to continue, you know, through the day. In our case, as Salvadorians, in our culture, is not something that is practiced. Therefore, for us, it's something weird. We, we feel like if we take a nap, at that time, we might not wake up until 4 p.m. So taking a power nap is not something accustomed by us, but it's something very common in people from Spain. In Spain, that I have heard and I also have seen, that is something very, 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 very common. And then we have the last one, toss and turn. Toss and turn is what happens when you cannot fall asleep and you're just moving around your bed the whole night. So tossing, when you spend the night tossing and turning, is that, you know, you cannot sleep, you cannot uh, fall asleep, but are there in bed, just Isn't moving around. Yes, Amilcar. Are we going to have class tomorrow? No, no, tomorrow no. Oh. Okay, mañana okay, okay, sí, mañana you, pueden ir you. y disfrutar su fin de mañana pueden eh, comer pupusas sin problema. Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Que vengan aquí a comer. <laughs> okay, so basically that's it. Um, sorry that okay. I took two minutes from you guys. Um, but yeah, I am very glad that we are wrapping up this week. Um, we're gonna Did come you... back on Monday. Yes, who's Jose? Uh, fíjense que ya pude solucionar los problemas, pero hay un ejercicio del justo del examen final que ya estado va a repetir. Y no sé si le podría mandar mensaje ahorita para, para ver si okay. puede ayudar con eso. Sure, 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 sure. No problem. Okay, so, um, yeah, basically we are going to come back on Monday for the last two classes. So be ready for that. And uh, yeah, we're going to be wrapping up this course next week. So for now, thank you guys very much for your attention and participation okay, through you. the class. And okay, I hope I'll see you Monday. So have a good, good one. Good evening. See you okay. Monday. Bye-bye.